if you are from a family of for real upholsterers or have experience, um, look away. Don't watch this video. You got to go to another video. You got to make your own video because this will kill you. But I'm telling you, this will get her done. It looks good. It's good enough. If that's the level you're going for, this is your video. These belong to cousins, so we styled them very differently. The tops were pretty worn. As you can see in this photo, I didn't get it after shot, but that's the before fabric. It's kind of stained, and we just wanted to update it. So the client bought the fabric, and I told her way too much, so we had some extra. We just left the old fabric on. If it's too thick, you might need to take it off, but I'm just trying to teach you the fast, easy way to get it done. Just want to measure twice, cut once. I repeat measure twice cut once if you have a different style pattern and you have several chairs you might want to cut enough fabric that you have it coordinating if there's a big flower right in the middle you would want it in the middle in all the chairs if you were that type of person that needs it like that you're going to have to buy much more fabric than just to get it covered and coordinated so think about that when you purchase your material you need to leave enough fabric to fold over twice i'll tell you why later right here we're using a straight edge because you think you'll cut a straight line and you'll be going off into the blue yonder and wasting material so give yourself some training wheels here Cape or shawl. <laughs> shawl. Caitlin's Gen Z and I'm always saying, now what am I? But it cracked me up that she knew what shawl was. So we're trying to justify what we can do with all this extra material I made this client buy. Okay, back to work girls. I haven't done chair cushions in a minute and I was having all sorts of problems and I kept having to hammer them in and pull them out. And I was like, why is this not working? This fabric is not too thick. What is going on? Well, I find out later there are different lengths of staples so know this okay so use the right length buy the right length a decent staple gun if you're going to use these quite a bit go ahead and get the nicer one because this is a really nice one and it is so much better than my cheaper one i have so depending on how many chairs you're going to do if you're going to do this a lot in the future borrow one or get a good one okay right here we're folding it over twice because setting on this up and down and all the wear and tear if you just pulled it over enough to staple it it would tear through the fabric so we always fold it twice i don't necessarily say three times because if you have it too thick then you try to screw the cushion back onto your chair frame it won't work and it's not good i thought thick is better no you want it as thin as you can get wet by by with it okay now right here you're going to see me working with this a lot what i'm doing right here i'm cutting that oh please 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 be so careful because you'll cut it too much and you'll mess it up and you'll have to use your extra um, hair cutting cape and shawl material and start again. We don't want to do that. So I just mess around with this a lot and you get the fold right. I would, it's it's kind of one corner is easier to do than the other because you have to fold it the opposite way for the folds to look the same. So you'll know what I mean. And just mess with it until you get the least amount of wrinkles as you can in a nice corner. If you screw up and you staple it in, don't worry just take a flathead screwdriver pop that screw out needle nose pliers pop that not screw the staple and just keep doing it until you get it nice and you don't want to just staple the crap out of it and put hundreds in there and then you won't be able to get the chair cushion screwed down in tight to your chair frame so believe me i know this by experience i have screwed up a few times but if you can cut a little excess off on those corners do it but take your time think about it i mean i was just going in it like i had done it a thousand times and i was cutting it pretty close so anyways that's basically all that's it do you see the chair hole screws there you can see them don't put the fabric over that because then you will not get the screws to go back into your frame i'm telling you that's an important step if you're doing a nicer chair or if you're doing super cheap chairs that just don't matter and you're going to change them often you can get the thinner fabric but this was a really nice fabric it's going to hold up it's for a young girl and so we did it up right here all right there is a trick if you cannot get your cushion to go back down into your frame no matter what you do i've even put wood fill in the little screw holes and it still didn't go i have got l brackets before and just made l brackets and screwed it into the frame in a whole different spot in a whole different way and it works 
if I was a great video editor and really going hard at this, I would have done footage, but I'd had to pull it off of a live and do all this stuff and I didn't do that. So sometime I'm gonna show you how to do L brackets to do a whole new system of getting the cushion back down secure to your chair. Okay, there is a term in sewing, it's called just tack it in. So I forgot to say, when you do your fabric, do less staples, don't secure it like for a Oklahoma tornado, okay? You just get one or two up here to where it's just decent. You flip it over, if it all looks right and your pattern's not going, you know, this way when it's supposed to be going that way, then you're like, okay, it looks good. And the reason is, if it is screwed up, then you're gonna have to pull all those staples out to get it right. So that's why you just tack it in and then you secure it after it looks good, okay?